Some of you may be familiar, very good for jobs and researching companies, checking out salaries. Check it out, guys. Software Automation Engineer Salary. This top one up here at ServiceNow Company, check out their range. $148,000 to $160,000. Guys, this is a salary, and this includes paid time off, health insurance, 401k plans, maybe some kind of share purchase plan, and bonuses. So if you calculate it, it's coming out probably between over $70 to $100 per hour. Check out these other salaries, guys. Do you guys see this? I'm not making this up. People really do earn this kind of money for that kind of knowledge. And why do these people earn this kind of money? It's because they are so specialized. It's because when someone is seeking an automation engineer, they want someone who has this knowledge. They don't care too much about this. Now, a lot of jobs will be looking for someone who only knows this. And that's why we're teaching QTP automation because it's the number one automation tool out there. But if you want a job that doesn't only focus on this, you can have any job out there that you want just by knowing automation methodology. And let me give you guys a real hint about how my company conducts interviews. When I get a QTP automation engineer, and I'm making air quotes right now because I'm saying wannabe, QTP automation engineer, and they sit down to do a test. We do a hands-on test, not just verbal. I want to see them scripting. I test them on this and on this. I don't really test them on QTP because if they're QTP automation engineer, I expect that they know it. But I don't expect people to know this or this. And so in that instance, I eliminate these guys and I only get top of the line. And I am willing to pay those guys top of the line money if they know these skills. If they can develop a framework, maintain it, and make it extremely robust and dynamic and save ROI for the company, then I will pay them good money. I don't care about these guys because I'm going to have manual testers doing what these guys can do. They're irrelevant. And so now you guys see how beneficial, I hope you see how beneficial this knowledge is. Because when you get that foundation, and it may be hard initially, yes, it's a lot of stuff to learn. It's a bunch of stuff to learn. But you have to think of it. In the end, is it worth it? Do you want to make this kind of money? Do you want to have job security? Do you want to have opportunities? Do you want to be able to take your skills anywhere, no matter what tool the company is using? Come in there and create a framework. I'll tell you guys a secret. Not really a secret, but I have worked with other automation tools besides QTP. And those companies, they hired me because I know this. They hired me because they know I got the basic foundation, the basic knowledge to do my job. And this tool, man, this is like 15, 20% of your knowledge. You learn it within a little bit and then you're done. It's not that relevant. It's Yes, it's the most popular tool, so this becomes the most popular skill. But knowing it, it's not that big of a deal. Knowing this two together, that's a huge deal. That's powerful. That's what we're striving to help you guys achieve. And I hope that you guys stick with us. I hope you guys don't quit. I hope you guys help us help you make the automation industry better. Okay, I spent a good amount of time talking about that, but I had to make a point. I really wanted to emphasize everything, and I hope you guys are clear. I hope I've inspired you guys. I hope I motivated you to continue, to not quit. Just keep at it. Keep learning, guys, a little bit at a time. Keep applying these skills, and you can easily move from here to this kind of if you're seeking a salary, but if not, you'll also get job security, more opportunities, and so many other benefits come along with this. You can even step into the developer world and start developing. The opportunities here are endless. So I just want to tell you guys to not aim of being a monkey. Yes, we'll give you guys our code. We will share it. But don't let that be your end result. Don't let the first question out of your mouth be, hey, can I have your framework code? 
because then that tells me that you want to be a monkey. And that's not what I want for you guys. I want a lot better for you. I believe that you guys can do better. Okay, done with my spiel. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's move on to the learning. So, our next reserved word is exit. And what this does is it ends a loop, subroutine, or a function. Now, you guys may not be familiar with all of these guys, but no worries. We'll teach you everything, don't worry. But I'm just going to show you quickly exactly what exit does. So, for example, if we create a do while loop, Okay, and we run it. Let me put a breakpoint here. So this is what's called the loop, guys. Just imagine it has to enter in here and some is going to do some action, kind of like a function, but it's called a loop. Let's step into. And now it's going to do an exit do. And so what's going to happen is this message box will never get executed. You guys see that? Let's do something else. Let's do an exit four. Guys, same thing here, guys. This is going to enter, and it's going to run 10 times, and it should display hello. But it will never be able to, because I'm going to exit the for loop. And why may you want to exit? Well, for example, let's imagine that... Let's imagine that if i is equal to 3, then we need to exit the loop. And instead of that, just imagine that i equal to 3 being some kind of an error occurred. You know, boom, some kind of an error happened. And we need to exit the for loop because it's dangerous to stay in it. So let me show you. Put a breakpoint here, run it. And we're going to step into. Now, i is not equal to 3. We're going to get a hello message box. Let's continue. Another hello message box. Continue. Was the value of i, it's 2. Another hello message box. And now, was the value of i, it's 3. So now it should exit the for loop. Boom, exits. You guys see that? It will never hit another message box. Okay? It's just a way to exit the loop, sub, or function. And now I'm just going to show you guys how to exit all the other ones. Just one more for show. And then we'll continue. Okay, let's run it. What are we going to do? Oh, of course, have to call the function. Now let's go. Step into it. Hello from QTPTutorial.net. And now we're going to exit the function. And that's it. Okay, it just exits before the next command. Let me just comment this out. Hope that makes sense to you guys. You don't need to do any more for now. Just remember all these terms and you guys will get to see them used again in the future as we progress, of course, through the lessons. So next word we arrive at is function. You guys have already seen so many times because this reserved word is extremely important in VBScript and many other languages. Now, what this does is... Defines a function and its arguments. Let me see if I have this in here. I do. It's commented. Okay. Now, here I have a function. Let's step into it. Run it up to here. We have a compilation error. One second, 235. Okay, sorry. Need a parentheses in here. Run it. Step into, check it out. This keyword identifies that this is a function. That function to end function, all the code around it is relevant to this function. Okay? It's relevant to this piece of code. Like I said before in my previous tutorials, imagine that this is a miniature QTP script or VB script and it does some actions 
and that's it. Then it's done. So between this word and these words, we execute some kind of an action. So let's see our message box, first name. Let's do it again, last name. And then it's going to, oops. Then it's going to return a pass to this function. So check it out down here. You can see that it returned the pass. And then that's it. It's over. Pass. Cool. That displayed because I was. Because I was using a message box to display those values.